Worley was a hospital for the mentally ill, located in Brentwood, Essex. The site has since been redeveloped as private residences. A site was identified within the Brentwood Hall estate for the construction of an asylum. The asylum was designed by Kendall Pope in the high Victorian Gothic style to a, vic uh, to a corridor plan layout. The foundation stone was laid in October 1851 and the hospital was officially opened as the Essex Lunatic Asylum in September 1853. The site chosen at the time for the asylum was a hamlet containing Worley barracks, cottages and a number of beer houses, at least one of which was used for other and less moral purposes. The asylum was built in an area surrounded by fields and woods. Inside the walls were whitewashed galleries, unfurnished dormitories and unheated. The beds low wooden boxes with straw mattresses, one basin per ward and no lights in the patients' rooms until 1920. Gas lighting was used until 1930 when the building gained electrics. The asylum's water came from surface supply, which was easily contaminated by sewerage. In 1854, an outbreak of Asiatic cholera led to installation of a filter bed, before a typhoid epidemic in 1884 led to the construction of a deep well. In practice, it seems very little water was actually drunk. The asylum had its own brewery which supplied patients and staff. All patients were given half a pint of beer at 11am and dinner. At entertainment events, the patients were treated to gin and water and later gin and lemonade. In 1853, the asylum housed 307 patients. By 1900, there were 2,081. The asylum underwent a number of extensions to accommodate the increasing number of patients. The Great War of 1914-18 to 18 dealt a significant blow to the asylum. 102 staff left to fight, seven of whom died. Food rationing in England led to many patients dying, 525 in 1917 alone. Building work resumed pausing for the Second World War. A large proportion of patients, staff and equipment from the London Hospital was evacuated to the asylum. By 1950, patient numbers was reduced to 2002. Early records show patients admitted of the most unpromising clinical material chronic with high, very high proportion of epileptics and frequently moribund on admission. In 1853, 204 of the 274 admitted were regarded as incurable. In 1860, the asylum became overfull. Rather than extend the original building, they constructed distinct houses with as much possible the plain arrangement of a country home. By the turn of the century, due to overcrowding, 680 patients were moved to the newly constructed Good Maze Asylum. There was no psychiatric treatment for the patients. Treatment was opium which was freely used for melancholia. Bleeding a patient was used to exhaust agitated patients prior to admissions. Also mechanical restraints, chains and jackets were used. The, re the use of restraints declined and was very rare by 1900. Hydrotherapy started in 1926. Water at different temperatures was applied to patients in various ways. This included baths, high pressure jets, warm water used to treat insomnia, whilst cold water was used to control the maniac. The Essex Asylum changed its name to the Brentwood Mental Hospital in 1920, allowing for the first time voluntary inpatient admissions and outpatient treatment within the hospital. 
By 1937, prolonged narcosis was used barbiturates to sedate patients for long periods, the so-called sleep, deep sleep therapy. In the same year, chemical convulsant therapy was also introduced. Chemical convulsants were later replaced with electroconvulsive therapy, ECT. By 1946, saw psychiatry's most infamous procedure, the lobotomy, or prefrontal leucotomy, reached Brentwood. The hospital employed its own neurosurgeon who carried out 200 procedures up to 1953. After the introduction of care in the community in the early 1980s, the hospital went into a period of decline and eventually closed in 2002. The site has since been developed for residential use as Maskell's Park. Meanwhile, the asylum buildings have been converted into flats and the surrounding grounds of the original hospital building were developed for residential use. In 2006, the movie Killer Killer was filmed in the old asylum building. If ever there's a building going to store up bad vibes, it's going to be a place like this. Over a century and a half, even the recorded incidents make the grim reading. God knows how many unrecorded worst incidents went on that nobody will ever know about. Footsteps have been heard. Torn off butterfly wings were found inserted between bricks in the chapel. Scrawled messages or carefully folded pieces of paper with troubling pictures on and tucked away behind radiators. The phrase, I'm not alone, gouged into one of the walls. Film crews heard footsteps loud enough over their sound recorders that they had to stop filming. There's already been a murder in one of the flats within a year of it being built. I wonder about all the generations of poor, demented and possessed souls who suffered the pain and anguish of met mental hell and who have died. Would the ghosts invade your dreams as you sleep in your apartment? <laughs>